Hello, I'm Arthur from Chile.com, and I'm glad today to have this opportunity for sharing our production experiences with Cilium eBPL for cloud native networking and security. Uh, the agenda, first of all, a very brief intro to the cloud info at Chile.com, and then our practices around Cilium, and then some advanced troubleshooting skills that might be helpful, but we already talked about. For the time limit of this talk, some technical details have omitted but you can find them in our blog post uh, that I think will be published today later. Triple.com is a one-stop online travel agency with 400 million users worldwide, providing booking services such as flights and hotels. Uh, the cloud team is responsible for our infra over the globe. Uh, this is a more detailed view of our cloud infra. In the bottom, we have data centers and the several public cloud vendors. Above this is our distribution systems for bare metal virtual machine and container. One layer up is the continuous delivery platform, and at the top are our business services and corresponding middlewares. In the vertical direction, we have security and management tools at different levels. The cloud scope is in this box. Uh, some uh, specific information. Most of our workloads now run on Kubernetes. We have three big clusters and several small ones with a total 10 kilo nodes and 300 kilo pods. Uh, most nodes are Blade servers, so uh, which run with 4.19 or 5.10 kernels. And uh, for inter-host networking, we use BGP for on-premises clusters and ENI for self-managed clusters on the cloud. Uh, so the second part, ciliumattribute.com. Uh, this is a simple timeline of our rolling out process. We started investigating cloud native networking in 2018, and uh, our first Cilium node rolled into production in 2019. Since then, all kinds of our business and infra services began to migrate to Cilium transparently. And in last year, with most online businesses already in Cilium, uh, we started a security project based on Cilium network policy. Uh, now let's look at some customizations. The two Kubernetes clusters are shown here. Uh, first, use Docker Compose to deploy Cilium. Uh, second, assign each agent uh, a dedicated certificate for Kubernetes authentication instead of the shared service account by all agents. Uh, third, will help to maturate the Cilium's RCS log driver and have sent all agent logs to Clayhouse for analyzing and troubleshooting. Uh, fourth, use few patches, a few patches added to facilitate business migration, but this is not that general, so we didn't upstream them. And next, use BERT as BGP agent. And last, we developed a new multi-cluster solution called the QV Store Mesh. Uh, more on this later. Uh, now the opt optimization and tuning parts. Uh, as mentioned just now, the first thing we've done is to decouple Cilium deploy from Kubernetes. No daemon set, uh, no config map. All the configurations needed by the agent or on the node. This makes agents suffer less from Kubernetes failures, but more importantly, each agent is now completely independent in terms of configuration and upgrade. The second consideration is to avoid retry storms and the burst starting, as requests will search by two orders of magnitude or even higher when outage occurs, uh, which could easily crash or stack central components like uh, Kube API server and uh, Kiwi store. Uh, we use an internally developed jitter plus back off mechanism to avoid such cases. Uh, the jitter window is calculated according to cluster scale, such as for a cluster with 1,000 nodes. The jitter window may be 20 minutes, during which window each agent is allowed to start one and only one time. Uh, then back off, you failed. Uh, besides, we also assign each agent a uh, dedicated uh, dedicated certificates, which enables Kubernetes to perform rate limiting on Cilium agents uh, with APF. Uh, Trip.com provides online booking services worldwide, so at any time of any day, 
business service done would lead to instantaneous losses to the company. So we can't risk letting foundational services like networking to restart itself by the simple fast failure rule, uh, but favor necessary human interventions and decisions. In cases like Kube API server or uh, QB store failures, we'd like Selenium to be more patient, uh, just wait there and keep the uh, keep the existing business uninterrupted and let system developers and maintainers decide what to do in the next. Bus failure and uh, automatic retries will just uh, make things worse in such cases. The next thing I'd like to talk about is scale. Depending on your cluster scale, certain stuff needs to be planned in advance. Uh, for example, Identity relevant labels directly determine the maximum identities you could use. Also, there are parameters that need to be tuned according to your workload throughput, such as connection tracking table. Another important thing is performance tuning. Cilium includes many high performance options, such as soft ops and BPI host routing. And of course, all these features need specific kernel version support. Besides, disable some debug level options are also necessary. Uh, the last aspect I'd like to talk about is observability and alerting. Apart from the metrics data, we also collected all agent logs, so we could alert on abnormal metrics as well as agent errors and warnings. Uh, besides, tracing can be helpful too. More on this later. Uh, now let's have a look at the multi-cluster problem. For historical reasons, our business are deployed uh, across different data centers and the Kubernetes clusters. So there are inter-cluster communications without layer four or layer three border gateways. And this is a problem for access control as identity is a cluster scope object. Uh, the community solution to this problem is cluster mesh as shown here which uh, requires every single agent to connect to every QB store in all clusters, effectively resulting in a peer-to-peer -peer mess. Uh, while this solution is straightforward, it suffers stability and uh, scalability issues, especially for large clusters. Uh, in short, when a single cluster down, the failure would soon propagate to all the other clusters in the mesh, and eventually all the clusters may crash at the same time. Essentially, this is because uh, clusters in cluster mesh are so tightly coupled. Our solution to this problem is very simple in concept. Pull metadata from all uh, the remote QB stores and push to the local one after filtering. Uh, the three cluster case in the right uh, so this concept more clearly. Only key stores are involved. In cluster mesh, agents get remote metadata from remote key stores, not they get from the local one. Uh, thanks to Thelium's good design, this only needs some improvements to the agent and operator, and uh, we've already upstream the sum of them. Uh, a QB store mesh operator is newly introduced and maintain, maintained internally currently. Uh, we'll devote more efforts to upstream it in the next two. Uh, besides, we've also developed a simple solution to let Cilium be aware of our legacy workloads like virtual machines in OpenStack. And this solution is called Cilium External Resource, CER. Uh, please see our previous blocks if you are interested in. Uh, now let's back to some technical stuff. Uh, the first one, debugging. Uh, Delph is a good friend and our Docker Compose way makes debugging more easier as each agent is independently deployed. Commands can be executed on the node to start, stop, reconfigure the agent. Uh, we've spotted several bugs in this way. Another useful tool is BPF trace for live tracing. But note that there are some differences for tracing a process in container. Anyway, uh, after locating the target file and check out uh, the symbols inside it, you can initiate user space probes like this and print things you'd like to see. Uh, the next one is the BPL tool. 
Uh, now consider a specific question. How could you determine if a cilium network policy actually takes effect? Uh, well, there are several ways. Uh, the first, uh, query Kubernetes. No, that's too high level. Uh, then check out endpoint status. Uh, is the user space state and still too high level? Check out BPL policy with a Cilium command. Uh, well, it's indeed a summary of the BPL policies in use, but the summary code itself may also have bugs. The most annoying and the trustful policy state in the end is the BPL policy map in kernel. We can view it with BPL tool. Uh, but to use this tool, you need to understand some Cilium data structures first, such as how an IP address corresponds to an identity and how to combine identity, port, portal, uh, traffic direction to form a key in the map. Uh, BPL2 also comes to rescue in emergency cases, such as when traffic is denied, but your Kubernetes or system can't be ready to apply any changes. In these cases, you could insert and allow any rule like this. The last skill we'd like to share is manipulate query store contents. Again, this needs a deep understanding about the Cilium data models. Uh, such as with the following three entries inserted into QB store, all the agents will be notified that there is a port created in Kubernetes cluster one and namespace default with IP address, node name, uh, node IP labels, identity information in the entries. Essentially, this is how we injected our virtual machines into Cilium scope in our CR solution, and it's also the basis of Cilium network policy. But manipulation of Q stores and uh, as well as BPL maps are dangerous. So we do not recommend to perform these operations in production unless you know what you are doing. In the end, a quick summary. Uh, we've been using Cilium since 1.4 and have upgraded all the way to 1.10 now. It's supporting our business and infrastructure services. And with four years experiences, we believe is not only production ready for large scale, but also one of the best candidates in terms of performance, feature, and uh, community. Uh, in the end, we'd like to say special thanks to Andre, Daniel, Joe, Martinez, Paul, Quentin, Thomas, and all the Cilium guys. Uh, the community is very nice and has helped us a lot in the past. Okay, that's all, thank you.